What's the YouTube? It's a Cinetech Ninja back at again with another video. Today we'll be doing the full review on the Sound Car Motion Boom comparing it to the Jivo Extreme 3 and 2. I also want to shout out Alan Ross Reviews for bringing the Motion Boom to my attention because without him, I would have never bought this speaker. So without further ado, let's get on to the video. I've had the Motion Boom since July 2021, around my birthday, and during that time, I gotta say, I am pretty disappointed with this speaker until the most recent firmware update. Since then, it fixed most of my problems. More on that later. Moving on to the features, start off with the Motion Boom. This is a mini boom box like the Jiva Extremes, weighing in at 4.4 pounds with the dimensions of 13.62 inches wide, 5.83 inches long, and 7.87 inches tall. The Motion Boom is a compact powerhouse that you can carry around with ease with a built-in carry handle. However, it does not come with a carrying strap like on the, the Java Extremes, but you can buy one on Amazon for $20. And if you ask me, that is a must-have accessory. Soundcard claims up to 24 hours to listen time for the Motion Boom 10,000 milliamp battery, but when the volume is set to max, I'm only able to get 5 hours 43 minutes and 24 hours 52 minutes when the volume is set mostly at 60%, then 70% because this speaker just took too long to die. The bad news is it takes forever to charge, 6 hours 43 minutes to be exact, which makes this the slowest charging speaker I have. The Motion Boom is really Bluetooth 5.0. I'm able to get around 95 feet in range while supporting SVC Auto Kodak, which means whenever you're watching your videos, lip sync is, is going to be an issue. The Motion Boom is really IPX7 water re resistant down to 3.5 feet for 30 minutes. It is not rated for dust, but it can take some. Just note that dirt and debris can get caught behind the grill and you need a metal pry tool to remove anything on the speaker. Moving on to the speaker setup, this is pretty interesting. The Motion Boom has two 2.5 inch woofers, titanium woofers that happens to be just as strong as steel, but 45% lighter and highly corrosion resistant with two plastic pad separators on the sides. Good job, Soundcore. <laughs> Pushing 30 watts. And I would say that this is low, but this speaker does get really loud. I'm keep the spec list short for the extremes because I already did a full review on them. So if you want to see that video, it will be linked down in the description below. Moving on to the Extreme 3, it is rated Bluetooth 5.0. I'm able to get around 85 feet in range while the Extreme 2 is rated Bluetooth 4.2. I'm able to get 110 feet in range. The Extreme 3 has a 5,000 mAh battery. I'm able to get around 4 hours, 25 minutes on maximum power and 6 hours, 15 minutes when the volume is set between 50 to 60%. The Extreme 2 has a 10,000 mAh battery, but I'm only able to get an additional 15 minutes of extra battery life compared to the Extreme. When it comes to the driver layout, they're exactly the same. Two 2.75 inch woofers, two 25 mm tweeters with two factories on the side. The Extreme 2 is rated 30 watts on battery, 40 watts when you plug it in, while the Extreme 3 is rated 80 watts on battery, 100 watts when you plug it in and to be totally honest this power is really wasted so i don't know why it's that much more powerful moving on to the feature start off with the motion boom sound core's main advantages that they have compared to other companies is the highly adjustable nine band eq and with great power comes great responsibility because if you boost anything on a speaker too much it will distort even more at higher volumes so take your time to properly eq the speaker you do have the options to use the presets, but at the same time, they mostly suck, so you better get handsy if you want it to sound the way how you want it. The Motion Boom has true wireless stereo. You are able to pair two Motion Booms together for LR stereo to get that wide immersive stereo sound. However, you cannot pair them in sync, and this is bad because if you have two Motion Booms in two different rooms, you'll only be hearing one channel at a time. Lastly, you have your multifunctional button to play pause, skip reverse tracks, answer and phone calls with a decent call quality microphone as long as you're within 10 feet and a 5 volt USB type A charge out port, which charge your device pretty slow to be honest, but it is there if you need it, like on the extremes. Moving on to the extremes, one thing I love about JBL is their pairing protocol and I use it almost every day. 
The Extreme 3 has JBL Party Boost, you're able to pair up to 100 JBL Party Boost speakers together, or two Extreme 3s for LS Stereo or in sync. And you can do the same thing on the Extreme 2, but it has JB Connect Plus. The bad thing is that you cannot pair these speakers together because of fragmentation. I also wanted to mention that both of these speakers are waterproof and you can take phone calls and use it as a voice assistant. I'm not sure if you mentioned that for the motion boom as well. Moving on to the sound test, there'll be three parts. First will be indoors, volume match between 50 to 60% to represent average listening volumes. After that will be 100% on battery mode to get the max potential on each speaker. Then we'll take the speakers outdoors to represent a party, so maximum power. The extremes will be plugged in while the motion boom will not because it does not receive a additional power boost. However, I have tuned the motion boom to the best of my abilities. And the Extreme 3 does also feature a EQ, but it is nowhere near as good as the motion booms. So take this sound test with a grain of salt. So please put on your headphones for the best sound experience and let the sound test begin. We'll be driving our state, yeah The crowd for the next crowd, yeah Going our own way Trying to find a new world, yeah We'll be going in circles Trying to find a way Searching for The things we do, yeah Drop top without a choice, yeah Head go around to the window Singing stupid No, he's so real I just wanna get to know ya I wanna go far to the coast, yeah I wanna drive fast to the ocean I wanna know all of you Growing up like a ghost, yeah. I wanna have kids of my own, yeah I live a life till it's over But it's too weird to It's sleeping so long
back for that sound test. Hopefully y'all <laughs> enjoy that. The motion boom is the best bang for your buck. It is much lighter than the Extreme 2 and lighter than the Extreme 3, except when it is on AC mode. The motion boom stir separation is very good. I'm clearly hearing the left and right artifacts, but at the same time, it sounds kind of two dimensional due to the lack of tweeters. The mid highs sound pretty good, but it rolls off very fast after 14 kilohertz. So you're not gonna get that sparkle like compared to the extremes. The mids on the speaker is forward. On the other hand, they're good, but not great. They'll sound okay for all genres. But when it comes to the deep bass, it has a peak at 48 hertz with a roll off at 43 hertz. You do have some leftover, but after that, it's really gone. But with that being said, it is stronger in deep bass in deep bass than the extreme three and two the mind-boggling eye-popping all new when it comes to the jvl extreme two the highs are much cleaner the mids is known for being more forward and the bass is more on the punchy side with a 65 hertz peak with the same roll up at 43 hertz again the motion boom deep bass is more prominent while on the Extreme 3 has a sharper kind of sound signature. The highs are pretty sharp, clear and detailed, a bit too much indoors, but you can turn that down. The mids can sound pretty flat, but forward enough to be encompassing. And the deep bass, it has a peak at 57 hertz with the roll up at 42 hertz. Yet again, the motion boom is more prominent so when it comes to overall sound quality, the winner goes to the extremes, but when it comes to the best bang for your buck, it goes to the motion boom, which brings me to my conclusion. 20 minutes later. Like I had said before, the motion boom provides the best bang for your buck. If you want the biggest smile on your face for the least amount of money spent. I'm not cheap, I'm generous. For $107 and retailing for $70 on sale, the motion boom will do it if you do not care for distortion because when the volume is set to 80% or above, the highs can get somewhat out of control, the mids will sound pretty muddy, and the bass from 80 hertz to 100 hertz, you will hear chassis vibration, also known as distortion. Basically, it is a very unpleasant sound. The deep bass, on the other hand, when playing frequency notes from 40 hertz to 45, the motion boom will begin to slap itself with the pants where it's pushing too much air. You hear plastic clacking, which just gives this speaker a cheapness feel. Well, it looks pretty cheap in a way and it feels it, just saying. With that being said, the Extreme 2 retails for $218 on average. You can find it for a bit more or a bit less depending on what color option and where you're looking. But if it was my money, we'll have all three of them. No shit, Sherlock! I'll go for the Extreme 2 because the Extreme 3 is just too high. $318. Oh, hell no! Throughout this review, is it worth almost twice the amount as the extreme two or three times the amount as the extreme i mean as the motion boom no there is no feature that can justify that high price the only way i can recommend it if you have jl particle speakers and you just got to have the extreme three go ahead get it it is your money but going back to the, the extreme two it is not the best sound speaker here but it is a overall safe option you're getting quality sound you're getting just a overall good package for $218. I can recommend it, but if you can find it lower, like around 200 to like 180, which I have found it for, then I say jump on it. So this brings me to the winner. When it comes to sound quality ranging from first to last, Extreme 3, Extreme 2, and then the motion boom. But once you factor in that price, it is the other way around. So, who do you think won this video? Let me know in the comment section below. 
Besides for that, I thank you so much for watching. This has been the Cinetech Ninja. I'll catch you next video.